2017 AB BC free response for the famous boiled potato problem. At least it was famous to my kids in the year 2017. Uh, and maybe the interwebs, who knows. Uh, at time t equals zero, a boiled potato is taken from a pot on the stove and left to cool in a kitchen. Uh, the internal temperature of the potato is 91 degrees Celsius at time t equals zero, and the internal temperature of the potato is uh, greater than 27 degrees Celsius at all times t is greater than zero. Uh, the internal temperature of the potato at time t minutes can be modeled by the function uh, h that satisfies the following Diffie Q. So here we go, dh dt equals negative one fourth in parentheses h minus 27. Cool. All right, where h of t is measured in degrees Celsius and we know that h of zero is 91 because that's the starting temperature of the potato. Okay, part A, write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of h at t equals zero. Use this equation to approximate the internal temperature of the potato at time t equals three. Okay, so before we get too stressed about this, right, anytime you're asked for an equation of a line for the rest of your math career, right, anytime you're asked for an equation of a line, you need two things. You need a point and you need a slope. So what I know in part A, they said at the moment when t equals zero, right? So what I know about that is that the point is 0, 91, right? T is 0, right? H is 91. Okay, so there's my point. First thing I need, point. Congratulations. The second thing I need is a slope, right? Now my slope is going to be dh dt evaluated, uh, sorry, not what I meant, evaluated at 0, 91, right? The mistake people make here is they accidentally plug in 0 for h, right? h isn't 0, h is 91, so it's going to be 91 minus 27, right? Um, so I end up getting that this is a negative 1 fourth times a 64, so it's a negative 16, right? So now I have a slope, cool. So once I have a point and a slope, I can write my equation, right? My equation is... Uh, y minus the y value, which is the 91, equals m, negative 16, x minus the x value, or just x minus 0, right? So there's my equation of my tangent line. Uh, except I shouldn't be using x's, I should be using t's because the independent variable is t, right? So my tangent line is negative 16 t plus 91, if you want to write it that way, or you can leave it like this. Either of them are fine, right? Um, I would suggest going the lazy route is totally fine. I also think they would probably let you get away with using an x here uh, because the point is that you're using it as a tangent line, but who knows. Uh, and next part, they say use the, da, 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 use the equation to approximate the internal temperature when t is 3. So h of 3 is going to be approximately what happens when I plug into this equation, right? Oh, also the lazy way to do this, if you don't want to actually distribute, I mean here it didn't matter because it's a 0, is to leave this as a t minus whatever number's there, right, t minus 0, and then just add the 91 to the outside. So when I plug in 3, I get negative 16 times 3 plus a 91, right? Uh, so I end up getting that this is 43 degrees Celsius, right? 43 degrees Celsius. Cool. So again, just because it looks daunting, just because it's a complicated situation, it doesn't matter. If you're asked to find the equation of a line, you need a point, you need a slope, you need point slope. All right. Part B. Uh, use d squared h dt squared to determine whether your answer to part a is an underestimate or an overestimate to the initial temperature. Okay, so if they tell you to use d squared h dt squared, the first thing you have to do is find it, and that's going to be worth some points, right? So if we erase this, right, they're secretly asking you to do two things in part b, right? They're asking you to do two things. They're asking you to find d squared h dt squared, and then they're asking you to use it at t equals 3 to answer a question, right? So uh, you have to do both of those things. So you might as well start with, you can't possibly do this piece until you've done this, so you might as well find the derivative. So d squared h dt squared, because that's what happens if I derive this, equals, now if you want to distribute this, you can. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, so... If you want to make this a negative 1 fourth h plus a 27 fourths, that's fine, right? So if you made this a negative 1 fourth h plus 27 fourths, that's great. When you derive it, you're going to end up with a negative 1 fourth dh dt, and then this guy goes away, right? This is the important piece of information. People forget the dh dt. So that is a negative 1 fourth times the thing that was my original dh dt, right? 
So I end up getting that d squared h dt squared is a 1 16th times an h minus 27. Cool, great. I'm then asked if my answer is an under or over estimate, right? So the thing about this is that since we know that h is always over 27, this was given in, in the information uh, at the top of the problem, this was given, this has to be a positive quantity. And since 1 16th is just a 1 16th, which is positive, what I get from this is that d squared h, dt squared, is greater than 0. So since d squared h dt squared is positive, I know that h looks like this, right? h is concave up. What that means is that if you use a tangent line, right, if you use a tangent line to something that's concave up, the actual value is physically on top of whatever estimate you get, right? So when you're asked if a tangent line is an over or under estimate, it's about concavity. It's always about concavity. Sometimes the AP does you the solid and says, hey, by the way, use the second derivative. And that way they're giving you a hint that it's about concavity. But sometimes they don't. And so again, just what I want to point out is that if you're asked if a tangent line is an under or over estimate, concavity will tell you. Because if you're concave down, your estimate is higher than the actual. Or your estimate is higher than the actual. If your graph is concave up, like it is in this case, you'll see that your graph is lower than the actual. So in this situation, since d squared y dh, uh, sorry, d squared h dt squared is greater than 0, I know that um, my my 43, was it 43? I think it was a 43. 43. 43 degrees Celsius is an underestimate, right? So it's this situation. Now, it would be silly if I told you that I have it memorized whether concave up or concave down leads to an over or underestimate. I don't. I draw this picture every time. It's just easier. So, because uh, I know that if I memorize something, I have a 50-50 shot of getting it wrong because my brain is tragic. So, uh, so draw the picture. Show that it's concave up, right? If H is concave up, then that tangent line is sitting underneath it. Cool. Part C. Uh, for t less than 10, an alternate, uh, an alternate model for the internal temperature of the potato is given by a g function, uh, and we have dg dt. So what they're basically doing to you right now is they're 100% changing the problem. Like, you don't need h anymore. It's not relevant, right? So um, aside from the fact that the original temperature, which is now g of 0, will also be 91. So in part c, we're given a new function. We're given dg dt equals negative g minus 27 to the 2 thirds. And we're still, it's still the same potato. So g this is just a different way to model it, right? So g of 0 is still 91 degrees Celsius. Um, find an expression for g of t. And based on this model, what is the internal temperature at t equals 3? So here's the thing. Um, this is going to be where all the points lie in this problem. I mean, not genuinely all of them, but probably at least five, sometimes six, uh, depending on how much work they make you do in other parts of the problem. So First thing you have to do is separate the variables, right? So dt is going to come over here, and all of this stuff, I'm actually going to leave the negative with the t, all of this stuff's going to go over here. So I'm going to get dg divided by this ugly g mess to the two-thirds, right, equals a negative dt, right? Separating the variables is the first point. If you don't do this, you get nothing. It doesn't matter if you do the most inventive, creative thing. In the whole world after this, it won't matter. You're not getting any credit. So um, this is actually to the negative 2 thirds, right? So when we integrate this guy, we're going to essentially just use u sub uh, with the power rule, right? dg, and we're going to find the antiderivative. And again, I chose to keep the negative with the t because it just seemed easier. It's up to you. But um, when I integrate this side, uh, technically it's u sub. My u is a g minus 27. My du is just dg, so it's fine. Uh, so I'm going to up the power by 1 and divide by the new power. 1 more than negative 2 thirds is a positive 1 third. Right? And then divide by 1 third would give you a 3. So you're going to get 3 g minus 27 to the 1 third equals, on this side, I'm just going to get a negative t plus c. Right? Now, they did say find an expression for g of t. They did not expressly say, I don't think, let me check, that you had to solve for g of t. Um... I think they do, yeah, they said find an expression for g of t, so they want you to find g in terms of t. So, good times. So, I can either find c now using the 091, which is fine, or I can find c later, it doesn't matter. So, if you choose to plug in 091 now, right, um, make sure you plug them in the right places, right, this is going to end up being a 91. So, we've already done 91 minus 27, it's a 64. So, this is 3 times the cube root of 64 equals uh, negative 0 plus c. 
So I get 3 times a 4, which is a 12. So my C is 12. All right, once I have C, right, once I have my C, I'm going to come back, uh, tell you what, I'm going to give myself this for a sec so that I don't have to reinvent the wheel. All right, so I now know that 3 times, uh, and if you want, you can rewrite the one third power as a cube root. That might be easier. G minus 27 equals negative T plus 12, right? And now I'm going to solve for G. And after I solve for G, I have to use the formula to approximate the temperature at 3, which would be G of 3. So I'm going to start by dividing by 3. So I get the cube root of G minus 27 equals a negative one third T plus 4, right? Then I cube both sides. So G minus 27 equals this whole quantity cubed. There is no incentive on the planet to clean that up, right? And then I'm going to add the 27 over. So my G of T is in parentheses, a negative one third T plus four quantity cubed plus a 27, right? So there's my G of T. And that's one of the things I was asked for, but I was also asked for G of three, right? And that's going to be plugging in three uh, for my, uh, plugging in three for my T. And I get negative one plus four quantity cubed plus 27, right? which should be a three, uh, sorry, it was a negative one because it was negative th one third times three. Uh, so I should get three cubed plus 27, which is a 27 plus 27 or 54 degrees Celsius. And that is my approximation uh, for the temperature. And that's the boiled potato problem that had everybody stressing in 2017.